the little brothers and sisters in Christ for our Bible by the pond if you want to turn to this uh, memory verse 2 Timothy 2.15 We read this a lot, brothers and sisters in Christ, and we don't really get the full meaning sometimes. So I wanted to talk about it. So let's read it. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's read verse 16. But, shunning, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Okay. Well, oftentimes you'll see that the Profane and vain babbling oftentimes follows feelings and opinions. Okay. But let's start that from the beginning. Study. People think it's all about head knowledge. And we've talked about this. You can be the most intellectual guy in the world and have zero wisdom. Wisdom is life application. God can give you wisdom and tell you this is how you live your life. And you start living it and you're like, Lord, you're right. Intellect is just intellect. Head knowledge. And so many people today have that head knowledge. Mm -hmm. So they think, well, study. Study is a good thing. Memorizing scripture is a good thing, brothers and sisters of Christ. But when it says study to show thyself, what's the point? Study to show thyself approved. Show. It's action. You're taking what God is showing you in his perfect written word and you're applying it to your life. So you can show. And we've talked about this in other studies that we've done together, brothers and sisters of Christ, when it comes to you have approve and prove. Prove is something you do. You prove yourself to others. Approved is what other people do to you. you they approve you. You've proved yourself. They've seen it. And then when someone asks, it's almost like they're a witness. I approve of this person. They've proved themselves to me. That's what they do. And now I'm approving them because I've seen what they did what they can do, what they stand for, how they live their life, okay? So it's a show thyself approved, but unto who? Unto God. Okay, that's the first person that gets approved is God's the one that approves people. God's the one that saves people, okay? It says, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. There we see it again, a workman works. Why do you study this book, brothers and sisters of Christ? Well, we just study to study it. Uh, no, you study it with your heart. The Bible says, it's on this book right here, uh, the plaque that's on this bench I'm sitting on right here says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You study God's word and it starts up here. Head knowledge. Show thyself approved. It's got to make it down here to your heart and become life application. You have to start living it. Okay. And when you start living it, God, you show that God's approved of you because you line up with this, God's perfect written word. Then the brethren come along and say, okay, I can approve of this. The best example, without going into a big study, remember this is just a talk about memory verses and go back to the, uh, the beginning and, and the basics. But remember um, Paul, when he first got saved, they're like, uh, no, we don't, we don't, we don't believe that. This is Saul. This is the man who was killing Christians, hunting them down, carting them off, sending them up so they can be killed. This, we don't. This can't be a good guy. This can't be a Christian. Somebody else had to come along and say, I've seen the change. I, he's proven himself to me, and I'm approving him to you guys, saying, I've seen the change. I've seen him up there preaching Jesus Christ. I've seen the beatings. I've seen the trouble he's getting into. He's done a 180. There was a change in his life. Right. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. He had good works based off scripture. Now there's good works, there's bad works, and the Bible talks about how some works can be reprobate. They're worthless. And to me, that just still falls under bad works. If they're worthless, What's the point? Okay. 
good works. Need not to be ashamed. And that's a whole other study in itself that we talked about in some of the other studies we've done too when it comes to being ashamed. Some people say like with the long hair, the Bible says that it's a shame for men to have long hair, but it doesn't say it's a sin. Uh, if it's a shame, it is a sin. Show me one thing that's good and true according to this book that people, that you're going to be ashamed. God's going to be ashamed of you. Brothers and sisters in Christ will be ashamed of you. Show me. If it's good and true, there's no need to be ashamed. If it's bad, wicked, worthless, it's wrong. That's why I always push that when you do a study on the word shame and ashamed, you realize it's all negative. What you're doing is wrong. Okay? Now don't get me wrong, you're going to have family members that turn against you and they will be ashamed of you. But it's still negative because they're ashamed of you for doing what's right. You gave your life to Christ. This is your final authority, the King James Bible. You start changing God, not you. God starts changing your life and starts putting you on the right path and you'll start seeing people leave left and right. Okay? You don't just study this book to have head knowledge. You study this book with the heartfelt intent saying, God, change me. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to believe? What are my stands? How am I supposed to live? <laughs> Rooster's out. How am I supposed to live? Okay. How can I do good works? I want to be approved by you, O oh Lord. How can I do good works? You study this to apply it. And that's the part that a lot of people fail and fall short. They like to study the Word. They like to have memory verses and everything. And they memorize verses. But they forget to apply those verses to their life. They forget to live the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Study show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. And the big thing that we've always pushed, and I know you know this, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you don't and you're new to it, fine, but rightly dividing. You divide this book. The best way we say it is, is this Bible is all this Bible, this perfect written Word of God from Genesis 1 clear to Revelation, all the way to the end, is written for us, for our learning, for instruction in righteousness, okay? Lear, uh, learning how, the, say, all scriptures given by inspiration is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It's a big one, but for correction, for reproof. We can learn from the mistakes that people have made in the past. Okay, God always tries to get us on that right straight and narrow path. Okay? But all the Bible's written for us, but the whole Bible's not written to us. You say, what's the difference? Well, in the Old Testament, God had different things going on. In the Old Testament, there's some things in there like the animal sacrifices that are written just to people in the Old Testament. It's not for today. There's things that were written when Jesus was walking on this earth. He was trying to bring in the millennial kingdom, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. That's what millennium means. Millennial is another term for thousand years. Okay? The thousand year period where Jesus Christ is going to physically rule and reign on earth. He was trying to bring that in. Is that for today? No. The Jewish people rejected him and it got put off. Okay, You have what we call uh, the church age. Now, bottom line, that's just from the death of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ. But there's things in here written to saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. So if you're really new, I'm not trying to confuse a lot of people, but these are called dispensations. Okay? The time of Jacob's trouble, the body of Christ, we get called away and got called up, and there's a seven year period where God's going to be pouring out His wrath on this earth, and He's going to go back to focusing on the Jewish people. And at the end of that seven year period, He's going to, Jesus is coming back physically in the flesh and he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. There's things in here talking about that thousand year reign and how things are going to be in that thousand year reign. But that's not written to us today. There's things we can learn from it. There's instruction in righteousness. But people need to understand when it says rightly divide, you need to rightly divide. Okay, The most confused people I've seen is they'll take the whole Bible and think the whole Bible 
is for them today. We're supposed to obey everything today that this book has to say from beginning to end. And when I hit them up and say, why aren't you doing animal sacrifices? Oh, we don't have to do that anymore, but it's a command. What about this? What about that? I mean, the Old Testament, it's right. It's, and you keep going and going and going. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. There's dispensations. But the biggest key for this talk that I wanted to get with you, brother, sister in Christ, on uh, Bible by the Pond, is that a lot of people forget that it's life application. That's why it says study to show thyself approved. Show. You prove yourself to God. You prove yourself to the body of Christ. That's why it's the body of Christ. You're still proving yourself to God when you're proving yourself to the body of Christ. And a workman, good works, will follow true conversion. Mm -hmm. And the reason I kept reading number 16, but it says, but, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. The ultimate thing that you're going to see when it comes to profane and vain babblings is people are going off of feelings and opinions. It's the biggest thing. Well, I feel, well, well I think, and... And sometimes you'll hear him say the word, I believe, yet when you say, okay, show me in Scripture. Show me your belief backed up in Scripture. And if it lines up with Scripture, you say, I believe, does your life back it up? I've come across false converts that claim to be Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women in words, but I always say this, in words versus deeds. Are they living it? Are they walking what they're talking? What they claim to believe, what they claim to stand for, are they walking that walk? And lately, it just seems like we're dropping like flies, and I almost want to say nine out of ten times, it's like you find out that person really isn't walking the walk. I'm not saying that person's lost. I'm just saying that there's a lot of people out there that they'll talk the talk, and they're not always walking the walk. We're falling away. We're falling. Uh, I'll have a study coming out shortly. I keep talking about it in the last video, but about three things that will get in the way, prevent someone from getting saved, get in the way of someone's walk with the Lord, and hurt a man in ministry. Okay. I'm hopefully going to get that out soon. But I just really, really want to push this, brothers and sisters Christ. It's not enough to read this book. You say, well, I don't just read it, I study it. It's not enough to study this book. That work that you do, the reading and the studying becomes uh, reprobate if you're not applying it to your life. If you're not living a life of Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then the Bible says you're to sanctify them through thy truth, Jesus, truth, thy truth, thy word is truth. All right. This right here, you got Jesus in you, then you're going to have His Word hidden in your heart, and you're going to do your best to live it. And when you fail, what does the Bible say to do? Deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow me, is what Jesus said. You got to get back to doing that. You got to deny yourself, meaning that you have to drop the pride. You got to drop anytime you think you're trying to establish your own righteousness. People always call it self-righteousness, but when I look in this book, I don't see the word self-righteousness. The Bible says you go about to establish your own righteousness. This is why they say self, but bottom line, it's saying you try. People say you have self-righteousness. There's no such thing. God is the only one that's righteous. Okay, You go and you try to establish your own righteousness, and what happens? You fail every single time. Okay. It's God's righteousness. When you go about to establish your own righteousness and you fail because you're trying to cover up for your sins, your mistakes, your error, you're going off to the left or going off to the right when you're supposed to be staying on that straight and narrow pass, path, that's what it means to deny yourself. You get back to the book and say, okay, Lord, I failed you. Where did I go wrong? He shows you, okay. Pick up your cross. That's repentance. Repentance starts at salvation and goes until the day God calls us home.
okay? It's a lifelong process that starts before God saves you at salvation. Pick up your cross daily, repent, forsake, move on. How many of you heard that statement? Repent, forsake, and move on. Okay? You made a mistake, you screwed up, Lord forgive me, He is faithful to forgive. Get it out of your life and get back to serving the Lord. And how do you do it? By studying to show thyself approved. Studying to show, to work it, to apply it to your life. Not just up here, that's the study. Then it makes it down here so you can show what you've studied, so you can be approved of God, and you're a workman. You have works that line up with Scripture that you're not ashamed of. Right. So hopefully just this short study, Bible by the Pond, to help motivate you guys to go back to the basics. Remember the reason why we study this book and read this book, so we can make it, hide it in our heart, and apply it to our lives. And when you're applying it to your life and you're doing your best to live it, you'll find that a lot of the sins you used to f sin, things you used to go off the left and right, it all disappears. And you can stay focused on the Lord. You sin less. Not as much. And I still fail the Lord to this very day sometimes. But not as much as I did when I first got saved. Definitely not as, at all even close to how I was before I got saved. When I just didn't care. Right. Study to show thyself approved. We study to hide it in our hearts and to live it. Brothers and sisters of Christ, make sure you keep that in your heart. I want to live it. Lord, tell me what to do. And when He shows you something you don't like, say, Lord, it's not about me. It's not about feelings and opinions which lead to vain babbling. Okay? Which we read there, profane and vain babbling. People pervane this word because they read something that they don't like because their flesh says, I want to do this, and they don't like, their flesh doesn't like it. I mean, likes this, but the Bible says, you're not supposed to be doing that. You're supposed to be doing this over here. And that's when you're going to get that happening. Stay focused. Stay on the straight and narrow. Stay focused in these last days, especially with everything that's going on right now, brothers and sisters of Christ. Stay focused on your walk with the Lord. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.